There's a player that many chess fans are talking about, but nobody knows who he is. His name is Ray Enigma. He became so popular, especially in his home country, that he was invited to Spain's Got Talent. And he didn't disgrace himself at all, reaching the very final, where a super boss awaited him in the form of the 12th world champion Anatoly Karpov. And suddenly, this game became the most watched in the history of chess. Greetings, dear chess fans and experts. This is Feedmaster Max Omariv with you. And before I start analyzing the game, let me introduce you a little bit to Ray Enigma, the hero of the issue. He became famous, first of all, because he bought my backpack and decided to use it to make a costume that hides his true identity. This mysterious image became so popular that they began to invite him to all sorts of television projects, including the closing of the tournament in which Magnus Carlsen played. And eventually, it came down to taking part in a talent show on national television. His super performance was playing blindfolded on a single board. Just look at the host's reaction, how impressed she was. Simply by playing blindfolded on one board, he was able to get to the very final of the show. And there, the organizers offered him a deal. If Karpov beat him, then he would have to reveal his identity. He accepted that without any hesitation. But what was his surprise when they called the 12th world champion Anatoly Karpov? At this point, he began to imagine how the mask was coming off his face, but still he had some hope. After all, he was more or less a decent chess player. His rating is around 2600 on the chess server Lichis, and he's relatively young. He's about 35 to 40 years old, so he's a solid master in his prime. And let's take a look at his fight against the 12th world champion in a 3 minute blitz game. Anatoly Karpov presses the clock and d4 is played by Ray. Knight f6, knight to f3, e6. Anatoly Karpov plays something in the spirit of the Queen's Indian defense. Bishop to d3, knight d2, looks like the London system and he enforces the center with c3. Bishop e7, queen e2. He's not thinking of castling yet. cd is a rather odd decision because after ed, the dark squared bishop opens up. Castle from black and white, d6. Anatoly Karpov doesn't fight for the center at all, or rather, he uses pieces to attack it a4 to prevent black from activating on the queen side. Knight d7, h3, rook e8. So we can see systematic development going on. The knight goes to c4 to make way for the bishop. Queen c7, bishop to g5. While development is over, Ray drives this bishop away. No time for deep thinking. Knight d5. Karpov invites the trade of the dark squared bishop. After all, white has some activity on the king side, so bishops come off. Knight e7. What should we do now? Ray pauses to think. Knight d2, he moves the knight somewhere. It's not clear where yet. Maybe he wants to play e4 to push d6, but knight f4 is there, so queen g4. Knight f6, queen to h4. Ray takes control over f4 looking at the black king. The counterattack on the queen side begins. What do we do next? Probably we should take the pawn, because we don't want to give any chance and we shouldn't have given away the line. The knight a3 was stronger. Here Anatoly Karpov seizes the A-file. The knight hangs, he has to put it away somewhere. Knight A3 doesn't make sense now, there's going to be B4. That's why Ray needs to move the knight to E3, and he does that. Rook A2, an immediate move. Anatoly Karpov presses on both time and position. What's next? Pawn hangs on B2 and it's not very convenient to defend. Rook B1 will be passive there. Some counterplay connected with mate doesn't come out, so Ray Enigma pulls his hand. He's not sure, but still, knight to d1. He drops back to defend the pawn. Bishop c6. We protected b5. The piece may move to e8 or to d7. It temporarily blocks the queen, but the pawn is safe now. Knight to e4. Ray exchanges as many pieces as possible. Apparently his strategy is to make a draw with the world champion. Actually not a bad plan. Anatoly has no objections so far. Exchange, queen e4. Knight f6, not to let anything on h7. Queen moved to e2 because it was hanging. Queen b7, knight e3. Ray sees everything and reflects all threats of the champion so far, but he creates new b4, c4. He does not want to exchange. Queen b6, attacked the pawn. Bishop b1, attacked the rook. Karpov does not blunder. Retreats to a8. Rook d1. Ray is preparing some kind of counteroffensive. b3, and now d5. The Phantomas strikes back. 
He feels that the mask is about to come off. Bishop b5, attacking the queen. Queen f3. So far there are no blunders, the opponents play very attentively and reliably. Well now the queen can potentially move to f5 and the knight to g4. That's why the bishop d7 is played. We don't let anyone on f5. So the pawn reaches b3. It's deadlocked, but the knight g4 followed. Nevertheless, you'd want to exchange this defensive knight. And Anatoly Karpov began to think. He decides to capture it with the bishop and save the knight. Queen b4. The pawn now hangs on g4. It's not so easy to keep it. In fact, the only move is bishop f5 and that's exactly what Ray executes. Rook e8. The rook wants to potentially move to e5. King h2, some kind of prevention, but it's not clear yet. Rook e5. Anatoly pushes on d5. But rook d3. b3 is attacked by Ray. The counterattack and we have nothing to protect the pawn with. So Anatoly Karpov plays queen c5, strengthens the onslaught on pawn d5 and carefully moves back to e8 to prevent checks. Queen d4. The pawn on d5 is still under attack and if the rook goes to d3, the pawn on b2 will be in danger. Therefore b3 is played by Ray. He didn't want to give up his distant b pawn. Well it's probably time to chop the pawn on d5. That's exactly how Anatoly Karpov plays, and after rook d3, he gives a check. Queen e5, queen g3. Knight f4 is a big mistake. Ray instantly played rook f3 and passed by an easy win. Now I suggest you to pause the video and find how the man in the checkered mask could beat the world champion. Well, of course, the rook e3 wins. There's rook hangs on e8, and on any queen retreat, there'd be a simple win. After which Anatoly Karpov would have to resign. But he was lucky. Let me see where this leads. Knight e6. Total exchange begins. And now we have an endgame. Knight on d4 attacks the pawn even though it's protected. The rook b8 still creates a real threat. Rook e3. F6. Defended e5. The bishop d5 check threatens so he can't take away on b3. The bishop moves to c4. Pawn is defended but the king actively runs forward like the goalkeeper at the end of an important soccer game. He goes to help his team. Rook a8, king to g2. White's king is not as active so far. Rook a1, rook d2. White is purely defensive, he has no other choice. Black is aiming for the pawn on b3 and white blunders. Bishop to g8 and the king to c3. Now the rook is trapped and Ray just loses it. He takes a chance on the move rook e2, but Anatoly Karpov, of course, notices this rook. This starts a mess in the last seconds. Karpov has an extra rook, he attacks the f3 pawn. F4. Well, it's necessary to collect all the pawns quickly to at least eliminate the risk of simply losing on time. Anatoly takes g3 and g4. That's it. The total destruction begins. White only has two pieces left. He leads the e pawn forward. He wants to turn it into a queen to destroy the white's bishop. He succeeds. Bishop e2, knight e2, b4. That's it. Karpov has taken all the pawns. But he has four seconds on the clock. Rook g4. He doesn't give anything away. Why push the pawns? We have to deliver a checkmate. We have to cut off the king. Finally, the right plan comes to mind. He begins to drive the king to the last rank. The king c6, and he needs to just corner and mate it, but he's just a little short of time. Ray Enigma flags the champ. This is how he was able to get a draw and save his face. Well, Anatoly Karpov congratulated his opponent for a good game, noting that he played strongly and reliably. And Ray spoke respectfully of the world champion himself, stressing that this was the most important game of his life. And this match truly went down in history, as it set a world record for live chess viewing. Two and a half million viewers sat in front of TV screens to watch this fight. And what do you think? Was it worth it or not? Write in the comments down below. And I thank you for your attention. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Also, check our Instagram and Telegram channel where we post fresh news from the world of chess. Keep playing and studying chess, and I'll see you soon.